<laughs> well, thank you so much for finding the time. Of course. Yeah, you look handsome. Thank you, thank you, I put on pants. I think pants are important because you never know when you're gonna have to get up. So, I would imagine that your business has not slowed down. You would think, um, <laughs> except that it has. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I, you know, I run a consultancy of one uh, who works with brands, organizations, politicians, people in the public eye, who I try my best to prepare for a crisis. Mm -hmm. Some of them have taken the advice. Some of them ha have been turtling a bit over the last two weeks and uh, laying off staff. And, that, and that's incredibly difficult to hear, but it's more important than ever to have to communicate with folks and about how this is going to impact them. And sometimes that's some companies are not there and uh, some some folks are not there. No, my business is uh, taking a hit for sure. So what are you finding are the common themes? My practice is built on uh, making sure that people are prepared for a crisis before it happens. Uh, whether it's in the arts industry or cultural sector or the airline industry or politicians. My business is built on making sure that we're ready for what just happened. The folks who are ready, I'm great. Press the red button, institute your plan. But it's not always been the case that, that folks are ready to institute a crisis management agenda. A lot of my clients are ready to be in a, in, in a crisis situation because we prepared them for that. We've identified media spokespeople, we've done key messaging, we've got folks who are trained to go on camera uh, and know exactly what to say and do to make sure that we're all getting through this together. Uh, but, but some people have not. It's, uh, it's been interesting to watch as people are navigating their own internal difficulties. Are you able to break down the companies and the organizations that are successful in managing COVID, what are they doing? My most successful clients are people who saw this coming on day one and had a plan. What is the biggest fear? Yeah, that's a good question. My biggest takeaway from this is that we're going to remember how we treated each other, how we treated our employees, how we treated the folks that are in our networks, and uh, there is a way to do that. Thankfully, we're in Canada and we have a government that's stepped up to the plate. Um, so the most resilient, the most uh, uh, successful clients that, that I'm working with are putting people first. What would be your advice to uh, companies that didn't see this coming as the tsunami that it is now? Yeah, uh, three weeks ago was a very different time. We are all doing this together. Um, and I, you know, the federal government stepped up, as I mentioned, uh, employers are stepping up, but mostly my, my sense is that just talk to people as human beings and figure out where they're at. So I think we're all getting a little bit better about being a little less transactional and more about meeting people where they're at. If you could give a piece of golden advice to employees that have been laid off, what would that be? In this moment, your government has your back, your provincial government has your back, your federal government has your back. Um, we're all in this together, that's it. Like, everyone's day has changed. It's Monday at 10.42 here in BC, and I have Skype calls and Zoom calls with a lot of business, and then and I play an hour of Clue the board game with my niece every day. Like, I think that we're bringing more of our whole selves into work, and I think that's important. What do you believe COVID's legacy will be? We are going to feel the ripples of this uh, for many, many months, if not years. After we come out of this, I think that we can be proud of the impact that public policy has on Canadians as citizens, as business owners as people in the construction industry, as, as humans. So I think that we're gonna remember very much how people stood up or didn't uh, during this crisis. The impact of public policy and it, where it meets us as citizens is, is going to be the, the thing that we all reflect on. Watching our, I'm gonna get in trouble here, but our social safety net compared with uh, our neighbors to the south, 
is very clear to me right now. In an effort to find the silver lining in all this, um, could you share a little bit about what your experience has been? I feel like I am better suited than many people because I because I'm single. I live alone in a high rise. At, well, here, like, I'm in, you know, Vancouver. That's oh, so that's that's my view. So that's why I, it's so important to me that I'm like scheduling calls with family and friends. And I've had calls, you know, I have friends all over North America, reaching out to them more often than not. And it's sort of like checking in, but slash mostly for me, you know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm necessarily talking to my inner circle as much, but what we're talking about is more meaningful. <laughs> we're thirsty for human contact right now. To your point, when we get out of this, we have an opportunity to realize that again personal relationships business relationships um that we're all just human beings trying to do our best so to be clear you and i have met once at my house once yes uh, and this is an example of those relationships right like <laughs> it's two two smart folks getting together and uh and and doing this i i love it i'm here for it yeah uh, what do you hope that we learn just to be clear that I have campaigned for Mr. Trudeau a couple times. Um, but I think that our government stepping up in the time when we need them, uh, mm -hmm. and this also goes for the opposition, Andrew Scheer, Doug Ford, um, uh, Jagmeet Singh, uh, have all stepped up. And my, my, my dear friend, uh, Christia Freeland, uh, always talks about Team Canada. Mm -hmm. And this has been a great example of Team Canada. My best friend lives in New Orleans, uh, so not great. Mm -hmm. um, I have lots of friends in New York, not great. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's hard to watch the difference between our, our public policy responses, I guess. So what are you doing for fun? This is fun. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it is fun. Okay, repeat that because it cut out. The last thing I heard is I'm a very bad homosexual. I'm a very, I, I watched The Sound of Music for the first time because I'm a terrible homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. So what, what do you recommend binge watching right now? Oh, um, there's a show on crave.ca called The Other Two and it's fantastic. <laughs> Okay, any parting words, my friend? We are socially distant, we're socially isolating, but that doesn't mean we need to be isolated. Everyone watching, I don't know, call a friend. Call a friend. Well, I'm so glad that I called you. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>